Kubrick was, you know, he had just done Paths of Glory, I think, or one, one of those, one of his Probably. other great, great works. Yeah. And so he was in New York looking at actors for, to play generals. So he, was, he wanted to see George C. Scott, although he knew he wanted George, he wanted to see him work out in, uh, in Shakespeare in the Park. Merchant at, of at Venice? Shylock, Mer Merchant of Venice. So he came to see it. He also, you know, I was playing Prince of Morocco. So he, these, these are not, this is not verbatim, but he said, I'll, I'll take the black one too. <laughs> and if, I will not accuse uh -huh. Kubrick of saying that, but that's essentially what, what the thought was. Uh -huh. I, oh, one white he, and one black to go. Well, no, he wanted George C. Scott, <laughs> and he wanted a, 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 a B-52 B yeah, crew of every ethnic. You know, the, the, the ethnic crew, uh -huh. You're a Jew, an Irishman, a Canadian even, and a black guy and an American Indian, you know, and when he, mm -hmm. he said, I'll take the black one too. And you, you got to be the black one? That's how I got to be the black one. <laughs> uh, you know, you'll never know the pain of being called the W word, will you? White? Whitey. It's painful to hear it. I, I, uh, I was called Whitey once, the only time in my life. Yeah. See, uh, black people tend to do that and not, not thinking it's just as offensive <laughs> as being called, you know, I, I was so flabbergasted. A guy said, watch where you're going, Whitey. I had made a bad turn. And I said, I need your advice, Blackie. That was fair, wasn't it? Of course it was. Mm, okay. But we've probably offended people of both races now. You know, the people in the profession are being offended these days. They've got their pens and papers already. Yes. <laughs> no, and yeah. then the guy, and the guy laughed, and that completely disconcerted me because he was shocked. I think, and he went, <laughs> But I said, you know, I didn't ask to be born this color. Yeah. And then he laughed again. I'd love to find this guy. It was on the corner of 96 I think he'd be a good and Lexington. Guy to know. Yeah, I'd like to know him also. <laughs> Wonder who he was. <laughs> um, so Kubrick ordered one black and one white to go and uh, got you into, into Dr. Strangelove. But yeah. you say he isn't that sort of person to really say it that literally. You were Kubrick careful. Is, is, was uh, obsessed with the subject of power. I think in, in, probably in, in his personal life too. Power. Obsessed with it. Uh, because all of his great movies are about that, about power, the abuse of power, yeah. especially about the use of power, about, you know, his uh, paths of glory. Just, uh, Tell us more about in his personal life. No, I, I, I don't know about his personal <laughs> life. The Kubrick I know, he chews gum. He's very sort of chews offhand. Gum? Yeah, chews gum on the set, very offhand. I met Ingmar Bergman and he had a cap pistol. I thought <laughs> really? it was more funny. Isn't this great? And, <laughs> this is Ingmar Bergman. I must have the wrong. Bergman, uh, but John it's Milius startling. John firecrackers. He plays, throws off all the time. Yeah. Kubrick chews gum. Well, a lot of young directors are going to start chewing, oh, yeah. chewing gum hearing, hearing you say that. Um, steep down gulfs of liquid fire, is it? Oh, that's wonderful. That line, what is that, six words from Othello. Yeah. If you'd only wrote, written those six words, you could feel you'd done your part. Uh, what speech does that come in? Where is that, near the end of the place? Deep down gulf. So it is Othello, isn't it? And not... Uh, it's after she's dead. Not yeah. Dagwood? Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's after she's dead. Yeah. Because he, he's, he's whipping himself now. He's saying, oh, what a fool I was, you know. He just killed Deep Desdemona. down gulfs of liquid fire. Yeah. That's what he wishes on his head. He wishes yeah. they were Did you find it as curious as I did when O.J., you've heard of him, the famous trial, um, when he wrote what I take to be a confessional and suicide note from the very beginning, there were no two ways about it. I mean, if your wife's been slaughtered by a stranger, do you say, remember me as I was? Wouldn't you talk about her a little? He said, remember me as I was, not this confused figure. I never thought and so of that, remember that? Was that yeah. among the things you would not say if your wife was murdered by someone else is remember me as I was. To me, the whole case is right there. But anyway... He said, maybe I loved her too much. Did that ring a bell with someone who's played Othello how many times? Wow. Who loved not wisely, but too well. Mm. Mm. But remember and then me strangled a white am. woman. Remember me as I am. Yeah. That was. Is that in there too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that just gave me goose pimples. Yeah, just the verb is different. Uh, he I must am. have had to study it in school and probably unconsciously. But I think O.J. must have read it too. That's two Othello quotes. <laughs> and then, of course, there's um, 
<clears throat> these little hands will ne'er be clean from another one, but we don't want to get too Shakespearean <laughs> here. Uh, on, Maybe on, Judge Edo will get onto that one. Does your son, could your son read Penrod in this age of political correctness and enjoy it? He likes buttwheat. You like buckwheat? You know, he calls it buttwheat. Buttwheat. <laughs> <laughs> and totally politically incorrect when he howls with laughter about mm -hmm. buttwheat. Now, my, my, my son is, uh, is, uh, he has no concern about politics at all, especially the correct kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, 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 you haven't banned Huckleberry Finn from oh, his no, reading. No, 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 can you imagine no, that no, snooty my, my school in of Connecticut? All three races, you know, so I, there's not much I can ban. There's no way to find the borders yeah. in here. But you said somewhere once, I am going to stop right here, the chain of no fathers in my heritage. Maybe you said That's that. easy. That's easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite easy to be, to be a father, to be a cousin father. I think the hard thing is to, is, is, is to be the abandoning father, to be the... The absentee father. That, that, that's very hard on, on the psyche, you know. I, I don't. I don't. Um, Especially since whatever they're escaping, uh, they, they, yeah. they they've also run into, you know. They pay the price. Either. Oh yeah, yeah. When you finally met your real dad, I mean your father, who'd taken one look at you as an infant and said, "I'm hitting the road." Uh, was it awkward? Was it? Did, oh, how'd, yeah. you, how'd you find him? Awkward because I was now, I was now, I was now uh, bigger than you know someone you lift up like this. I was. You could pick dad up. <laughs> I could pick dad up. <laughs> I just got out, out of my, uh, not the army, but I, my ROTC, Fort Benning, Georgia. You know, yeah. I'd been down there and all pumped up, and and we hugged each other, and uh, you know, it was it was just odd, because you came we came to New York to find him. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. if if you want to do the storybook version, yeah. He was I, known, though. Wasn't there were foot tracks in the sand. Yeah, he was known. Yeah. Yeah. And I came came to to find him. You know, to, to I, I came to meet him because he had offered me a trip to New York when I was fourteen, and I was forbidden to come. Did so a door I, I, open and there he was behind it, and you said, "I'm your son." No, I got off a train in Far Rockaway, and he was yeah. there in his bathing suit, strapping. You know, handsome, we knew you were going to very handsome man. Yeah. And uh, he walked along the tracks in his bare feet, and, and we hugged, and there, and you know. Well, the passing trains. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice scene for the movie of your but, life. But we, 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 yeah, with Charles Barkley playing me. Mm -hmm. um, the, we, we didn't know what to do with each other. And we made, we made the mistake of trying to mess with the, uh, the identities, you know. Uh, he had his identity, I had mine. And to be father son, you've got to have some sort of a blend. And we tried to mess with that alchemy. And it was a big mistake. It still is. I mean, when, when he and I tried to be father son is it's a big mistake because it's, it's 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 alchemistry that has to have started back in the in the modern pestle and it didn't so and you, you had no past to draw no on there's no there's no yeah. really yeah and it was felt false to try to be father and son yeah, it, it, was, it was you know blood doesn't mean anything yeah. uh, of itself you know, except dna right which takes us right back to that <laughs> right. inevitable subject I'll tell you a story, and you, in the next segment, that you'll remember the longest day you live.